Ready? Hell yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the John Peckman Podcast. I am John Peckman. Nothing you can do about that. We are in the podcast studio of Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance in down, beautiful downtown Portland, Connecticut. Just over the bridge. Woo! Come over the bridge, start looking left. You know what I'm saying? We are here with the, the Michael Cleary. Here he is. Michael hey there. Cleary. I'm not the only Michael Cleary, but I am the one that's here now. Well, I don't care what those other Michael Clearys do. I don't care what they do. It's kind of funny because I formed a Michael Cleary group on Facebook. I found as many as I could. And every couple of years, someone would say, hey, Mike's, how you doing? And I would just say, hey, man. (laughs) Really? I have somebody friend has a friend request on Facebook that's John Peckman with my name spelled. And I don't want to friend him. (laughs) Somehow, I'm like... That's cute. Yeah. What? That's all. What else is there? Yeah. Oh, hey, bro. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, I, how? What's your life like? I've yet to be cloned, though. You know what I mean? I've yet to have someone like try to take your identity. You know how people, you can have it. Yeah. <laughs> take but, it. I don't but care. Be, but people try to like friend you, you know, because you see duplicates from people that got hacked or something. You know, it's like, is this you? And oh, it's like, obviously. You know, I never that. thought of that. Yeah. 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 But it's never happened to me because, and I think you know. So they think you're going to be like, oh, hey. This guy has my name. I yes. think I'll friend him. And then, <laughs> yes. oh, good and thing then I next didn't. thing you know, they're trying to sell you things that, yeah, whatever. Mm. Mm. Or they're scamming all your friends. So be careful. Be careful. Good. You can have all three of them. <laughs> my mom, I think Dude. Dave, maybe not even Dave. What are you even talking about? You're such a rage with the whole the whole live streaming thing. Oh my God. Oh, it's, a, yeah. it's a scene. It really is. I oh, look yeah. forward to it. And I'm, I have fun on late at night when you pop up. They're like, yeah, let's see what John has to say. And then the next thing you know, there's like 20 people. They're like, yeah, John's uh, espousing about music or, or who knows. And it's always entertaining. You're really good at that. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Come to find out. I don't know. I have no idea. But anyway, enough about me. Yeah. Yeah. What about in, you? Yeah. What do you think of me? <laughs> yeah, that's you know, right. As they say. <laughs> classic. Classic. Yeah. So Michael Cleary. Yes. Yes, sir. From? Portland, Connecticut. Really? All my life. I did not. I didn't know that. I actually born and know. raised. Why born did I raised. think you were Middletown? Uh, just because I'm kind of like the king of Middletown. That's all. Wow. Yeah, I run Middletown. Portland. Yeah, Portland. Born and raised, and then for some reason, when I got married, my wife decided to live in Portland. I'm just like, oh, jeez, I never get out of here. And never. I haven't gotten out of here. But it's a nice town. I like it. It's, it's yeah. beautiful, you know. And everyone knows your name, you know. You, Far out. Go into a restaurant. You're the only Michael Cleary in Portland, at least, right? No, I'm not. There's another. Really? Yeah, there's another Cleary family. I used to get calls, and it was like, oh, this is the other Cleary. Sorry, try 3421249 or whatever. Wow. Yeah. That, that, that's. Uh, do you still have the same, uh, do you still have a landline? You have the same phone number as ever? My no, mom has no. mine. Yeah, my, no. The first phone number we ever had, she still has. Growing up, mine was 3421894. I remember it, but it's not the same anymore. Mm. And not many people actually call the landline except for like scammers. Right. Yeah. I hear Sales you. people. You got the compressor pretty hard. hard I know. Hard. I, can, I haven't gotten into these settings yet. I do notice that. Okay. That's all right. I, I haven't figured it out quite yet. But I we'll would get turn the, down the sensitivity and the ratio. I can't, I can't pop the hood on this now. Not <laughs> while okay. we're rolling. All right. We'll get to it later. But I did notice it. <laughs> Um, so you are a maker of music here. In I Portland. love making music. Yes, it's wow. it's my essence. It's what I was put here on Earth to do. Far out. Yeah. This Earth. This Earth and any Earth, <laughs> interplanetary connect. If I was on Mars, I'd say, "Hey, here's a shaker." You know, and I just right. show them what the music is. That's yeah. cool. So what what do you do? What is well? Let's start from from currently now. Yes. Um, and then we'll go back to the beginning. Awesome. So, so right now, yes, I'm, I'm doing, I just released the album last year, uh, last man standing that I just dropped on the floor oh. and, um, that was done all remotely with me doing most of the tracks. And I collaborated with a drummer, Rob Griffith from a band called bronze radio. Return. Sure. Yeah. And he did uh, remote drum tracks and it changed my life. It wow. literally did. I was just like, Oh, I can work this way. You know, cool. COVID just shut everything down. So I'm like, I got a drummer. 
I just have to I figure out how to export and import tracks. Yeah. And I used a couple. If I couldn't play a bass part, I'd got Jeff Belcher or someone else who also had the same capability. You know, to, to be a musician during COVID, you had to have remote capabilities to supply quality tracks if you wanted to keep working or recording or whatever. Sure. And that's what happened. I found a couple of people and it's like, oh my God, I'm in heaven. And I worked so fast because it was just me making decisions. It wasn't art by committee where you'd have five people pitch. Yeah, I hate other people's opinions. Oh my God. I never listen to them. I mean, I was always a, a, a collaborative guy, but after not doing it, I'm like, I don't want to do that again. It was just so, wow. It's just not as uh, effective or efficient. That's the word I'm looking for. So it's for. not the Michael Cleary band. No, it's, it's Michael Cleary. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's like, uh, who was that band? The brothers from England, they're Liam something. Oasis. Oasis. Yep. And one of the brothers like, describe Oasis in one word. And he goes, me. Me. <laughs> and so that's, yeah, it's just, I, I finally, I mean, I worked all my life to have a studio. When I was young, I imagined just being self-sufficient uh, and sure. you know, record. And I finally, you know, now I'm an old man, I'm able to do it and I'm embracing it and I've never been more musically fulfilled. Wow. So, yeah. Hey, that's cool. It is cool. It's yeah. so cool. I'm so happy. <clears throat> Yeah, I find for myself the less that I have to do with other people, the better I feel generally. So, and, and I didn't good. realize, and and that you know, kudos to my band for understanding. They're very kind about it. But but um, you know, just the whole grind of gigging and booking and managing and mm. marketing and making sets and loading gear. All that stuff. Once I didn't have to do that, I was like, I am so relaxed right now. What is what is really? Different? So no more gigs. No, I, I've totally retired wow. from performing. Yeah, I have no desire to do it. And, wow. and they, they keep asking, and I'm just like, sorry guys. And they're they're cool with it because they realize I'm just a happier person. And because you know they're still playing gigs as the Michael Cleary band. Yeah, right? I told them to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, that's fine. Yeah, do, cool. I said, do it. I'll come up for one song. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> you know, just walk in. <laughs> wow. And so you were at it for a long time, though, with the band. Oh, yeah. We almost made, this would have been our 30th year. Oh, okay. Well, that's long yeah. enough, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's plenty long. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for everything, and thank you for the next chapter of my life. I, I dig that. Far out. Yeah. I. You know, I I still play gigs, but I know I know the feeling, you know, where you just go, okay, you know what? I will, I'll do this if I want to, but the, the reward that I'm looking for out there, I don't, not sure if it's still there. Key. That's key. Well, don't you think this is a little side thing, but this is what happened to me too, is when you start like you did, when you start counting the cost, mm. that's when you know you're done. Oh yeah. Because in the old days you would do it for free. Right. You, you know what I mean? No questions. You didn't care. You do it with whoever, wherever, whatever, for whatever. Right. Love it. And then when you start going, oh, well, that gig's kind of far or, you know, <laughs> I could, and as soon as you, to me. Well, I never really calculated, like I always told <clears throat> myself me. when it stops being fun, right? that's when it is. Right. And just in the last few years, it's like, why am I so cranky? You know, why am I aggravated? What, I was going to ask bothering you that. me. Yeah. And then, you know, as, as a new member would come in, we'd have to relearn, you know, and they would go just stay away from cranky. Mike. <laughs> well, that's, a, I mean, stone, the, the last bass player I have was like, and he's become a great friend. He was so supportive when I made a decision. Cause I'm Jeff? Like, dude, yeah. Jeff. Yeah. He's great. I'm like, yeah. dude, I'm so sorry. You just came on board and a year later. I'm like bailing out. He's like, dude, I, I'm, we're great friends now. And I'm so happy to see that you're happy. And he was totally understanding, but he was like, you were pretty uptight. A few of those gigs. <laughs> I'm like, I know I was just, oh, boy. Uh, it wasn't, I wasn't enjoying it. Cause I'm thinking about the sound. I'm thinking about, is the club happy? I'm thinking about the next song. You know what I mean? It's just, yep. you don't have time to enjoy the actual playing of it. Yep. I and know that's that. just, that's just me kids. Don't be scared off by that. No. Well, you know, I mean, once you're 30 years in, you know, yeah, you, you get the right to do what you want and just don't do what you don't want. Like you said, you should, you've should you earned the right to pick and choose whatever you want to do, and I choose not to do that now. I'm choosing to record and write because I find that completely fulfilling musically. Far out. Good. That's cool. It sounds that's the way it should be. So there's the record that I dropped. So this was the one I did last year in a record time, six months. It usually takes me six years to do a record. Oh, wow. Band, okay. You know what I mean? So yeah. I did this, and now I'm in the middle of the next one. I've, I've got a whole new wow. concept. It's a crazy, ambitious concept, which I don't think we have enough time for me to explain. Do you even want to tell us anything? Or I will. So the basic concept is it's a song I wrote a long time ago when my second kid was born, and his name was Dez. And I just wrote this song called Big Red Dez, which is kind of deifies him and makes him into this superhero. And, but, you know, what am I going to do with that? You can't play it in a bar. The guy's like, oh, we're not going to play that song. So then... I said, well, I've always wanted to do it. So then I came up with the concept of I'm just going to do it as a band called Big Red Dez. 
and the record's called Big Red Dez, and their single's called Big Red Dez. And then I said, I'm going to use it as a home for all my misfit songs I never got to play, and I'm going to turn it into this rock opera. And so I just started this concept of Big Red Dez is this guy that uh, a community of people follow, and they go into battle, and I have a basic concept of storming the castle and things like that, and then our, we have a protagonist who gets separated from the, the family or whatever and the rest of the songs are kind of his adventure and i'm not going to give any spoilers but there is some like freaky spoilers that people will need to freak out yeah he dies at the end but don't don't spoil it don't say anything i'm, I'm kidding Man. I know. why did i say that uh, but yeah but no it's cool because it, it gives me it it's i've never written like that where it's like oh i need a song about uh elves uh chasing him through the forest you know and then it's, it's easier when i have exactly a concept so I can just say, the elves are chasing me, you know, and it's just like, I don't even have to think of something, <laughs> you know, you, but you know what I mean? Sure. Just, you can just write about anything. And it's so, it's, a, it's so much fun. So I'm digging it. Far out. And it's, a, and it's more of a rock thing too. Cause I've been telling the drummer, <clears throat> I've been making him listen to Green Day. And uh, I said, pretend you're a cartoon character. He's like, okay, I'm monster from the Muppets. And it's, right, right. And he's yep. playing his ass off. So it's really cool. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. All right. Well, so we'll have to look for what? Look for Big Red Dez. I'm hoping to finish it this year. Okay. Far Dave, out. Dave, you need us for something? Are we taking Yeah, it? yeah. No? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, you know, then, okay, so take us to the beginning. Okay. Oh, God. How far back you want to go? So how about, like, first mind-blowing music experiences before I played music? Sure. Because that was kind of sure. an introduction. Sure. I would say... Uh, you know, I, I of course introduced the records. My I, I was the youngest of a family of six in the '60s, so I heard all the classic records. Um, you know, my brother had one of those things where you buy ten for a dime, and then sure. you, get, you know. And so I was getting, getting uh, I remember uh, "Flight of the Phoenix" by Grand Funk and these weird albums, and mm. you know all the other ones. A lot of Beatles, Crosby, Stills and Nash, a lot of Neil Young, Jesus Christ Superstar, yeah. which is high in my oh, list. Yeah. Um, but then, but. Besides just listening to it and acting it out, my sisters played and sang. One of my sisters would strum guitar, and they would sing these harmonies. And I remember being at a little gathering, and they were singing harmonies. I'm like, that sounds just like Peter, Paul, and Mary. And yeah, I was right. like, this is amazing. And the, the you know siblings harmonizing together have a special harmonic blend. Sure. And it sounded so good. And I was like, wow. So rock stars aren't the only people who can do this. Yeah, right, you know? right. And that started to make me realize. And then the, the second time that happened was... Mike Foley and Joe Flood, who are from Portland, okay. were playing at a party, and they started doing the same thing. And Joe was playing fiddle, and Mike was playing guitar, and they're harmonizing Crosby, Stills, or Nash, or whatever. Sure. And I was like, the same type of thing happened. That musical harmonic blend. I was like, wow. And I wasn't even thinking of being a musician, but then when I started taking lessons, my first lessons were actually here at Connecticut Valley School of Music. Wow. I had this woman. I think her name was Marie. She was a redhead. She smoked like a chimney, and yeah, and I yeah, and I'm in this little four by four cube. And this would be for Dave. I don't know. Well, owned he knew ever. Yeah, it was before he was involved. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is before. before. Yeah, but he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Marie Real. Yeah, the old days when you could just blow smoke in children's faces. She's apparently. smoking these, <laughs> you know, mile long Benson and hedges, sure. and she's like, "Why the E string lobby?" You know, and I'm like, sure. "E E E E." <laughs> And so, you know, after like six months of that, I, I was like, <coughs> I can't do this anymore. So I stopped doing it and I gave it up for a while. And then when I was maybe 17 in high school, they offered guitar as an elective. And there was a really good music teacher, Mr. Garner, I think. And I, Ned Garner, yeah, I wish I could find him to thank him because he really put me on the path. He started showing me bar chords. He's like, dude, you need to do bar chords. I'm like, oh, nice. there it is. And then he was like, you can, you're, he, he said, you picked this up really fast. He's very encouraging. He said, you could do this if you want to, you know? And I'm like, all right. And so I started doing it. And then I started taking lessons from Sal D'Alessandro over in Middletown at Rivers Music. And he cracked the code for me. Uh -huh. he, you know, he had his own teaching method, but I'm like, Dude, I want. I'm, here's a Neil Young song. Here's Southern Man. What's this? What is he doing in the solo? Where it goes. Ba -da -ba 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 -da -da. I said, I need to. I can do that. I think I yeah, can do right. that. And he said, Oh, that's the pentatonic, and there's a little Dorian minor. I said, That's it. That's, that's it. it. Yeah, and yeah. all of a sudden, the whole world opened up to me. I was like, I can do this. And then I'm like, Neil Young is pretty easy to play. I'm just like, he's kind of rudimentary, and the, but he couldn't keep me entertained for an eight minute solo in Cowgirl sure. Santa Yeah. But uh, but that opened the door for me, and then I realized I can do this. And like I'd play for friends, and they'd be like, 
You know, their jaws oh. are dropped. They're like, you could really play guitar. And I'm like, you think? Wow. And then I said, okay, I'm going to go to school. And my aunt left me some money to go to Berkeley. So that set me off on my path. Wow. Wow. Did you go um, all four years? Mm-mm. <clears throat> nope. I, me, uh, I went for a summer session and then a fall session. And then I said, I, I know enough now where I can just go rock out. And, and that's what I did. Were but, you right? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't. I could have stayed and tried to get a teaching degree, but it's like I just want to play. I just want to play in bars. And right. I came back. I hooked up with Nate Simmons over in Milltown, this very uh, wonderful blues guy, and he gave me my first band opportunity. And what year would about when would this have been? Uh, mid eighties, mid okay. to late eighties, probably. Although, yep. actually, my first band was this band called Rich Carlson and the Limit. Okay. I answered an ad. Guy looking for a lead guitar player. Um, is this a family show? Okay. Um, so guy looking for a guitar player and, uh, we played our first show at, it was the Agora, I think, or something like that. We're opening for Rick Derringer. Oh. And I met Rick Derringer. Sure. And Rick Derringer with high heels on is shorter than me. And I'm a short guy. <laughs> Far out. And, uh, there's other stories I can tell you, which I won't cause it's a family show. Sure. But it was fun. It was great. And it, you know, we, kudos, we're asking about each other's guitar and stuff. So. That was uh, that was my first introduction to an actual gig. But then I started thinking I was a blues man. I traveled around with Nate around the state for a little bit, and we played some blues gigs, and that was fun. Sure. And then what? And then we started Barnum's and Laboca were kind of the scene in Middletown. Okay. And we would play always at we could play at each club every night, and it was, it was a great scene. It didn't matter. No one got burned out, and they had open mics and stuff. It was it was before open mics were a thing. Okay. So they'd have open mics and. Uh, I went to an open mic that was out at the Monty Green of all places when the Monty Green used to be Mike owned by the uh, Chikini brothers. Yeah. And is this were, in Portland? No, this is Middletown okay. across from the Cypress. Yeah. It's okay. now an Indian restaurant, which is awesome. Gotcha. Yeah. H- Haveli Indian restaurant. It's great. Yep. So we went to this open mic and I was there with Paul Bosey and Eric Kuhn and we started playing and we kind of clicked and I said, hey, I can bet I can get us a gig over at Marnham. So we went over and kind of auditioned at the open mic. But we took one of the Chikinis and his girlfriend at the time. And we played a couple Jefferson airplane tunes and stuff like that. But we ended up booking a gig and just doing it as a three-piece. And then I played with those two guys as the bus for several years, four or five years. Uh-huh. And then uh, just started my own thing because I said, I, I really want to expand the musical palette and bring in some other people. And I met the Corvo Brothers when I was working at a music store and they're like, come jam with us. And I'm like, mm. okay. And we went and jammed at Ed's house. And I was like, these guys are special. They yeah. have something really special. No, they are for sure. And they were way above their age level for playing at the time. You know, they've been playing since they were 10 and they could sing and harmonize. And that's when I started recognizing talent in other people. And I said, man, I could write some songs and have these guys sing harmonies. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. And that, that started the Michael Clary band. I see. So there's my history in right. a nutshell. No, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The, in case anybody doesn't know, I guess, what, the Corvo Brothers, right? Middletown. Yep. Middletown Royalty. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Bass player and drummer. Yep. Both outstanding. Great, great, great players. Both sing like both, birds. Both sing like birds. Uh-huh. Eddie will, do you think that this is true when you play gigs with Eddie, mm. when you're talking to the audience, Eddie will harmonize what you're talking. <laughs> he could. You know, like he'll sure. find... You have to tell him, stop singing harmony to everything. I, That's I how musical he is. I usually don't have to talk to the audience when he's on a game. <laughs> <laughs> That's also true. Yeah. yeah, Eddie. And plus, I don't like talking. I'm kind of shy when it comes to that stuff. So I'm like, whatever. Eddie. Perfect. Yeah. 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 John Corvo, he's one of my favorite drummers. Oh, my God. They're so there good. To that. Yeah. And yeah. They're, such, they're so opposite that it's like they balance each other out. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. yeah it's just totally crazy. And John's more centered yeah he's just yeah. Much more together it's funny <laughs> yeah but i still hang out with ed i still talk to him a lot and it's like he's still crazy and i, I just yeah uh, there's uh, stories i could tell i just i know no, me too yeah. <laughs> yeah eddie yeah eddie's great yeah but i do i will <laughs> i will tell this one this one's sure funny but it's clean but but you know i'll use him as a sub sometimes when because you know he'll he can cut the gig and i'll be like dude I judge the the quality of an Ed Corvo gig when I hire you. Like how many songs it takes before I regret putting you on the gig. Really? And one one particular gig. You is, made it to the second song. No. I said you didn't even make it to the sound check. Really? <laughs> oh man. 
<laughs> I still tell really? him that one. Yeah, he likes it. He gets a kick out of it. Yeah, that's funny. Another funny Ed story. Give, give me this one. Oh yeah, so, dude, I could do. Vin, yeah, this could be our thing. <laughs> So Vin Delaria, who was our keyboard player for many years and was a, a solid right-hand man for me, very supportive, very, very encouraging, he decided he wanted to play harmonica on a couple of songs or just learn to play harmonica. So we had one blues song that, that Paul sang. It was an original. So I said, play the harp on that one. That's appropriate. So we were playing this party and it's just a little private party and we're doing the blues songs and, and Vin's playing keyboards and he picks up the harp and he goes, <laughs> plays a little solo. After the solo... Ed's standing next to him playing without missing a beat. He grabs a harp and whips it into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> I could totally picture that. During That's funny. Story, it was so great. That's great. Yeah, I could tell Eddie's stories forever, too. Yeah, he's so funny. I hope Finn isn't listening. <laughs> no, no. He, he, Ed, oh, there you go. Happy birthday, Vin. Hey, that makes it all up. Oh, there you go. Nice. So you started, so you were just a trio? The original Michael Cleary band? No, no, no. I uh, It was a solo album, but the guys were so good. I'm like, we could be a really good band. So I had Eddie and John. I had a keyboard player, Tony Abondanza Scarangella, who was actually my girlfriend's, my ex-girlfriend's boyfriend at the time, but he was a keyboard player. And, okay. we got along. and Paul Bosey switched. You percussion. stole you stole a girl from a dude named that? No, he, he was going out with my ex-girlfriend. Oh, okay. Right. I stole him from his band, and I have a funny story about that, too, because okay. they never forgave me, and I still <laughs> run into the guys sometimes. But um, so, and Paul Bosey, who was the drummer in the bus, I had him play percussion because he was a good songwriter, and I was more focusing on original stuff, and he was he was my brother, you know what I mean? We, we clicked sure. musically, and he helped loosen things up because the Corvo brothers were very locked in, and Paul was more of a painter and would go outside the the line, so to mm -hmm. speak. So so the five of us played for many, many years. I, I mean, see. Maybe 16 years wow. uh, with that lineup, except for one keyboard change in that time. So. Wow. Hey, that's cool. It was cool. It was so cool. Uh, that's some of the happiest uh, musical moments that I, I've experienced. Far out. Was there ever, was there a music, uh, was there a joint in Portland that you could do music gigs at ever? Or you always had to go over the bridge? No, we we did. Uh, Where was the spot? Early on, it was the old Meadows. Remember the Meadows? Yep. And and it was actually the guy from Saturday Night Live played there with the Beehive Queen once in a while. What was their name of their band back in the day? What, Scratch Band? Uh, yeah, Scratch Band used yep. to play there in sure. Portland. And it yep. was called The Meadows. And then they closed down and reopened as Farrell's. And, or it had a different name, but the Farrell's bought it. And oh, I, I right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the daughters bought it. And so bands would play there. I got you. The Lakeshore, it was called. No. Nope. Different. All right, never mind. Yep. That's easy. Okay. Yeah. But but I would you know sit in once in a while. with but Joe Flood would play there. I'd sit in and stuff. Sure. And uh, But as when my band started, we didn't really have a joint. We would play at the actual Farrell's. Once in a while, they'd clear out the back room. Okay. It was really inconvenient for them because we had to wait till the, the dinner ended and they'd clear out all the tables, but we would pack it, you know? So it was, yep. it was fun. It was worth it for them. Um, but we were like the only band who could really do that. So they're just like, yeah, it ain't worth it unless you guys play. So they just wrap right. it up. But we actually played at the Portland restaurant a couple times. Twice oh, okay. When Mike Lestrino was running it. And so that there was, was a... That was a hoot. But yeah, mostly it was Middletown. It was La Boca. It was Barnum's. It was, yep. And then when... Uh, uh, what's the the first beer place on the right as you go over the bridge? It used to be uh, Mother's. Eli Cannon. Yeah, it used to be called yep. Mother's. And yeah, uh, so I remember they, that. They, yep. yep. So we play there, and then the owner of Mother's opened up where La Boca is now. Okay. And it's called something else, uh, yep. uh, Middletown something. So we played there. That's kind of our home base. But we'd play the usual Hungry sure. Tiger and all that stuff. Yep. And, you know, all the joints. A whirlwind tour of Central Connecticut for sure. thirty years. Hey man, I was right there with you. Just in a parallel uh universe i guess yeah what well, we finally scratched our way to the middle yeah far out yeah yeah that was that was the that's when we knew yeah we were in the middle wow i don't know if i i don't i don't know where i made it to <laughs> you've made it farther though you've actually toured out of state you play with a k-man band which was pretty up up there in terms of is popularity. It? oh yeah i yeah. guess right they're, i they're honestly top, i'm not trying to be i just i didn't have the perspective in, in terms of top 10 connecticut bands that, that's right up there for sure wow yeah 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 and you, you were aware it. of that of the k-man oh sure we actually opened for him one time and uh was that, i in the band nope you were not okay and it was the strangest experience because i just tried to get a hold of tony i'm just like hey man i just want to talk about just he sure. never returned any calls so yeah uh -huh. um and then didn't want to talk to us when we got there 
but nothing bad against him. I Far know he was probably going through some stuff and he's doing much better now. Um, but, um, but you know, in terms of uh, like eight to the bar you played in, that's another one. To talk yeah, to I, guess, I guess you're right. If, yeah, I guess you're right. You, I never, I don't think about it like that, but yeah, I you, guess you're you right. played with royalty and the, you know, Jim Chaplin. I forget the name yeah. of the other band there. Yep. Feather Merchants. Sure. That's a good one. Okay. So you've, yeah, you got to, all right. So you all stayed right. your, you staked your claim. Okay. All right. Yeah. I never, I, yeah, I don't think about it that way, but I guess. Yeah. All right. Cool. Sometimes it takes someone else to give you some perspective. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure where I am now. <laughs> I'm not. It, it doesn't. I don't matter. even. It doesn't matter anymore. Are you? Are you happy? <clears throat> oh yeah. There you yeah, go. That's sure. all that matters. Sure. Yeah. 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 Definitely happy enough. I was thinking about it, as I'm sure you have. Like, yeah. Well, anyway, now, now we're talking about me, but yeah, I was on the road for like almost thirty years. Yeah. And I, yeah. I think about it, that I was all for anywhere from you know Maine to. DC basically was my run. Yeah, with your poofy hair. Yeah, with my poofy hair, which yeah. I almost have now. Yeah, you had the poofy hair. But yeah. dude, you would always win like best drummer like every year. And I didn't even know who you were. I'm like, who's John <laughs> Beckman? Yeah. And it was just like. Oh, you know me now. Yeah. <laughs> no. The whole world. No. Uh, but no, it's always you and, and Pivar. You know, oh, best musician um, like every year. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well. Oh, well. Hey, here we are now. You know? No, but that's something that you look at when you were in the position where I was. I'm like, wow, these guys are the cats. Oh, really? Yeah. I never. I, oh, totally. Okay. Yeah, well, we always looked up to you guys. I never, like, I never thought of it cats, that way. You know? And then, like when Monster Band was playing at the same time, that's when I met Ray. Yeah, Ray, sure. who's another Connecticut figurehead yep. in the music scene. And we're like, oh, Monster Band. That's what oh, we yeah, do. Sure. Yeah, we got to get funky. So we would start. You know, we kind of would check out other bands and cop what they're doing. It's like, yep. oh yeah, you got to hit them hard. You know what I mean? Yep. So. Um, we learned a lot from from digging other bands and cool. I'm just oh man, getting so many flashbacks, Scarlett O'Hara's and places mm -hmm. like that. Wow, yep, fun stuff. Far out. So then you continued. There was life after the Corvos. Yeah, that what happened was Johnny eventually. You know, he was married with some young kids, and he's just sure. like, I'm just, I just can't. And sure. I'm like, okay. And not to get too. Uh, uh, into the emotions of it, but Ed was like, I don't think I want to play without my brother. And sure. I'm like, I get it, you know, and right. me and Paul and Vin were left with this, like, well, what should we do? And I'm like, if we can find a couple guys without it being a pain, I'll, I'll keep doing it, but I'm yeah. not, I'm not going to work for, you know, trying people out. And sure. Sure. Thing. And we found a couple guys. And, uh, so I'm like, okay, we'll give this a try. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't, I can't even go with the, uh -oh. what happened with me and Ed. Cause he was just like, what do you mean? You're going on without me and i'm just like really dude yeah <laughs> wow so we we still haven't resolved this this day whether he left or i fired him you know what i mean really yeah oh, I, wow. I just have to ask him about it sometimes i talk to him all the time but that's funny it is so maybe funny. we'll have you guys work it out here oh that'd be great well, we'll yeah. yeah we'll, have, we'll have a counseling session jello oh. wrestling and counseling yes yeah Oh my God. But anyway, so, so I went on with a couple, I found Edmund Burt, this drummer and singer who was amazing. Okay. And, uh, the bass player we had at the time will remain nameless, but he was just a, uh, let's just say he was a placeholder until okay. we found Jed and then this okay. guy played with us for a year. And then Jed Klebowski filled in. I'm like, sure. You're way better than our bass player. Yeah. And I realized how good the other guy wasn't. And then Jed was like, yeah, I'll join. So Jed came on with us and we recorded another record or two, I think. With him, yeah, he recorded two records with us. And then uh, Vin left and Scott Wattell joined. Oh. And then Jed left and Stone joined. So that was the last incarnation. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. It was cool. That's I cool. all the good, and I'm friends with everybody who yeah. I play with. Yeah, you, no matter what happens, I mean. I'm, except I'm, that, I'm, except Ed, man, screw that guy. Uh, Ed, we're brothers, man. I, I know, we're I know. I, yeah, love, I, I love it. Yeah, I'm yeah, we're so, but we're so, yeah, we, we, like, we're so much brothers that we fight, you know what I mean? That type of stuff. Sure. We yell at each other and shit. Sure. But, um, but all, I, I'm, you know, I'm a mellow guy. I don't care what you want to do, come or go, whatever, you know what I mean? Right. And as I get older, I'm, I'm a little more easygoing than I was when I was first going. It. Right. Yeah, I, I guess that that'll happen. Yeah, that's we're, what we're all what, what uptight you, when we're young and just like this is it. This is my life, man. You better yeah, be yeah. at the level I need you to be at. You know yeah, that yeah. type of stuff. Yeah, I I know the feeling. I think right. I think we, hmm. we probably we've all we both. You it's, know. Your, it's your 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 
expectation and your enthusiasm start to level out and you start to see what's really happening. And it's like, sure. yeah, then you either, you either accept it and it's like, okay, this is what's really happening. I'm good with it. Or you say, oh my God, this is not what I expected. And you get out. So a lot of people get out after a while because they're older and it's like, oh, this is a grind. I don't like doing this. Yeah. Yeah. But I was still get, I was still into it uh, up until the end. I was like giving it everything I had. And I just, I love doing this. And then it was like, okay, when COVID hit, it's just like, Oh, I just felt way better about not doing it. And it just, your decisions sometimes get made yeah. for you. That's yeah. what happened to me. Yeah, I know. I, I can, yeah, I can relate. And, and luckily I, I discovered that, you know, I could record and create and collaborate and, sure. this, uh, you know, I embraced new technology. I was forced into the future against my will, right? but it worked for me. So that, I, you know that we're moving into the future now. We are totally moving every second, every second, second by second. And I'm, we're there again. We just Here did. It comes in. It's there happening it now. It, it just happened it's again. It's it's it happened. <laughs> Exactly. Yes, we're propelled. You can't stop it. Continually propelled. Wow. Tectonic plates are shifting as we speak. Yeah. Well, that's you know that's that's kind of cool. So you you maintained the core. You found out that what that what you really wanted to do is music. Yes. With music is this. Yes. That's cool. Hence the name Last Man Standing. Gotcha. I was gotcha. the last guy from the band, you know, but I had a song of the same name. I said, that'd make a great title. You know sure. I mean? And it was appropriate for the time. So, um, where, so you record, you, you say that you did this <clears throat> remotely at your home. Yes. I have a, a nice studio in my house. Nice. Where did you, your other albums, where did you, where does one record an album around here? I, well, I did the last few at my house, you know, once oh, okay. I started okay. really getting it set up and learning how gotcha. to use it, it's still a learning process, you know, but uh, the first couple ones we did at Mike Airface Studio. In sure. Midtown. Yep. We're going to get Mike him Airface, up here. He's a very good friend of mine. Yeah. And I consult with him all the time with my stuff because he, he showed me a lot of tricks that I still use in terms of sure. recording because, you know, I'll, I only learn from people who I saw doing it. Right. So we did a couple with him. Then when I started tracking myself, I still didn't feel confident in my mix chops. So Chuck Rubano was a guy that had another studio. And okay. he, he took our tracks and mixed them at his place. And then uh, MCB5 was the first one I tried to mix myself. And then the next one, and then this one. So I've, I've mixed three albums so far. So I'm feeling better about my skills, and I'm confident going forward that I can cool. do it. That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So you're just you're doing your thing. Oh my God! And next is what is it? Big Red or Big, Big Red Des? Yes, Big, yes. <laughs> Big Red Des. Big the the rock opera. The rock opera. Big yeah, Red the musical. Des. Yeah, friend of mine. I send him tracks. Lee is my still my go to guy to send him stuff, and he's like, "Dude, you're writing a musical," and I'm like, "Yeah, ain't wow. it cool? <laughs> Why not? It is. It's like something I would never normally do, and now I have. If you do it as a What's the word when you're doing it under a different name? You know, pseudonym. A pseudonym. So yeah. I, I might pick my. I imagine doing it under a pseudonym. Um, but I, I talked to the promoter about it. He's like, "No, you still got to have your name on it." So I'm like, "Yeah, right." Okay, right. I'll put it somewhere. But I'm gonna give it its own website, and it's gonna have its own videos, and it's cool. all cartoon characters. So I'm not even in, uh, pictured or involved. Far out. Yeah, and my kids are doing the, the animation. And oh, stuff, nice. So, all yeah. right. Yeah, so I'm doing right. that. That's cool. It's very cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well. I mean, that's past, present, and future. Whew, man, yeah. man, I'm a talker. Oh, huh? well, that's all right. No, whatever. You know, <laughs> we're here. Yeah. Now we can talk about the real stuff. It is a podcast. So yeah. yeah. Hit me, man. I'm ready. Well. Um, Are you ready? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> um, I caught you like nodding off halfway through like some of my stories. You're like, yeah. No, yeah. no, that's not true. He's like, oh, yeah. No, I always think with my eyes shut. Okay. That's my thing. That, well, that explains That's my it. thing. Okay, good. Um, all right. So I don't know. I, I'm, I'm thinking, cause I don't know whether I should get into this. Cause I, I need an answer. Go ahead, man. Happy. I, I'm into any psychobabble <sighs> right. you want to do. Okay. I, I need help with this. All right. The Rolling Stones. Mm. You like them? Yo, oh, sure. Okay. Um, I, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. I feel weird. I can see It that. weirds me out. I like a lot, as you know. Yep. I like a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I like a lot of really bad things too. Yeah. Like in the grand scheme of things. Yep. I just, I need somebody, I need a musician that I trust, mm -hmm. who I respect that can explain it. I like a lot of their songs mm -hmm. and I like the Stones. Mm -hmm. But I hear, I just read a big Rolling Stones book because I'm always, you know, I'm always trying to figure it out. Mm. I go, 
I, I must have this wrong. What, no, what I do love, I not get? I love that. And I read and I hear, you know, people that I respect, musicians, and they go, you don't understand. They're the greatest. When they play together, it's, and I'm like, eh. when? When yeah. does this happen, this thing you're describing? Listen, I uh, just don't get it. I and I you. feel like it must be me. No, no, I got you. The, the trick is don't ever listen to anything live by them. Okay. Don't ever, li- listening to them live will ruin it for you. Okay. Don't ever go see them. Don't, don't listen to any live stuff. You, you got to understand that their recordings, whatever take they ended up with, took them 50 tries to get that at least. No. They, could, they were not. That doesn't help. No, but, but that's why I'm saying why you might not think they're that great. Because they weren't. I mean, they're sloppy. They were on drugs. They're just awful. And then, but they come up with this riff. And it's the riff and it's the writing, just like in Led Zeppelin. There's a riff and there's a lyric, and that's the the magic combination. Him and him and Mick and Keith sure. had this thing, this chemistry that you only find once in a while. Sure. I mean, they weren't no Beatles, but they were they were definitely had their place in history because no doubt their hits were just grabbed you, and as, as a guitar player especially, it would grab you because you're like, what's going on there? And you don't even know it's this open tuning and with sure. five strings, and you're trying to do it, and it's so challenging, and it's like sounds so cool. But it's the little tricks like that where it's like, oh, he's using an open tuning. That makes brown, brown sugar so damn weird sounding. Yeah, you know, right. Just, so it's, I see. There's a, some there's some magic going on there, but it wasn't instant magic. It, it took him a long time to get every song right. And I, you've seen clips. There's movies of them working on a song, and it, it evolves from something totally unlike what it is and ends up what it's doing. Like early early versions of Tumbling Dice were horrendous, mm. and they released it as another name because they had that. Yeah, riff. right, right. But once they, the, they got the take, they only gave you the best take. And okay. That, that's, what, that's what you're hearing. So, hey, I, I don't blame you. I mean, I could still see why you'd say well, that doesn't help me. Because yeah, they they weren't virtuosos by any chance, except Mick Taylor was probably the best guitar player they had. Yeah, I think that's probably true. Yeah, they would probably say that. Yep, but um, but still, it's just it's just the the hook. The hook yeah. it's all about the hook with them. I don't doubt that they're special. Yep, you know, but it ain't for you, and that's okay because that's the way the world goes around. I mean, yeah, there's plenty of stuff that I don't get. There's stuff that I know you dig that I don't dig. There's sure. stuff my kid tries to turn me on. I'm like, right, eh, right. But, but some of it makes good. the world go around. Yeah, 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 but not everything's gonna grab you. Yeah, I just feel like I'm missing it. You yeah, know? I mean that you like some of their songs. That's good enough. Oh, I like a lot of their songs. Then t- that's good enough. Then move on. Take, okay. take it with that. Yeah. All right, let's move you on. You like the best songs, so that's you, you know right. you probably <laughs> like the ones that are worth liking. <laughs> yeah, I guess. You're, all right, you know what? Enough of that. Yeah, enough no, of that. But I like I like Jabber like that. I like to analyze stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I do too. Yep. All right. So you, do you know what you know what questions are coming? I this no is idea. starting to get. Oh, do you really don't? I don't. No. Okay, good. That's good because some people come prepared, and this ruins my whole thing. No, 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 no. I d- I just figured you're going to talk about teaching because I watched a couple of the ones you were talking to teachers here. So mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, he talks about eh, working at Connecticut Valley. So yeah, that's all I knew for background. Yeah. Um. Well, maybe. All right. So, as a do you do you pr- are you a practicer? Do you practice your instrument? Never. Okay. But until recently. Oh, because okay. I started, you know, sometimes you got to push yourself when you feel yourself like sure. kind of in a rut. And especially when you're trying to be creative, it's like, okay, I got to, I got to try something different. So I started learning open tunings on acoustic guitars. I got this J45 Gibson, beautiful on a tag sale. Mm. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to try some open tunings. I do the Keith open G. Don't talk about the stones, and, man. Sorry, no, no, okay. But it's a but it's an open tuning, and it's like a it's like learning another language. It's kind of like Spanish. Sure. You got to crack the code. Sure. sure. And then I tuned my other guitar to open E, and what blew my mind was the chord shapes are the same if you drop down one string. And oh. I was like, oh my god. Yeah. Now you know once you learn the major and the minor chords, that's kind of all you need to know to play. Sure. You know most songs. Sure. So that really pushed me, and then after playing acoustic for a long time, I was like, switch to electric. And it's like jumping from the Flintstones car into a Ferrari. I'm like, oh, I could play again. I got my old chops back. So then I started thinking, yeah, you know, and I'm in the middle of recording. I just want to stay up enough. So, because I'm focused on writing. I'm not focused on solos or virtuosity or anything. But once I start getting my chops up, I'm like, oh, it's solo time. You know, and you get to a level where it's like, okay, now it's time to do that stuff. So it happens by accident. I don't practice the practice. Right, okay. Just from playing. Yeah, I don't don't really either, but... I, so, if I play every day, I keep my chops up, and it, it's, yep. it's something I've been doing lately. Yeah, I've been trying to. Um, well, I don't. I think you know because you see me on Facebook. I'm mm-hmm. learning 
I'm learning the mountain dulcimer. Love it. New yeah. instrument. Saw that. That's open tuning. Love it. Yeah. And um, I do that to remind myself. I mean, it's a great sound too. But yeah, practice. I practice every day. You know. You know what I mean? That. Like I haven't done that in a while. I mean, I did when I took up bass again. But it's like, yeah, I'm getting back into it. Well, I that's spend too. Every, a part of every day playing, working on something. Where and it's it's fun. Try it's a cool. different instrument. You yeah. know what I mean? That I yeah. love doing that. I got a piano. I got keyboards. Sure. I play bass. You know, and yep. that that just opens up. If you're a musician, you're a musician. You can you should be able to latch onto anything and make music. I think so. I agree. I think so. It's fun to to hear your own musical voice coming out of a different. You know, I'm starting to kind of get past the point of getting through it and just kind of putting a little swag on it and i'm like oh yeah hey that sounds like me playing a different <laughs> instrument but that's funny. an awesome feeling though right when yeah. you get to that level yeah yeah like like playing drums i didn't i can't i can play a beat but until i actually like, took a couple lessons from you oh that's you right know? yeah and, and we did a you know for a hot minute i took a yep. couple lessons sure and once i got the separation of the appendages, right that's the hardest part it opened up new neural pathways yep. in my brain. I started yep. having weird dreams. And oh, just yeah. I forgot to warn you about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, really. But once you do it, it's like, oh, here I am. I, as a musician, you can only grow by playing more music and learning other instruments or, or you know, listening, challenging yourself. Sure. Whether it's listening to something outside your comfort zone or playing something outside your comfort zone. Yep. If I was to tell kids, uh, you know, coming out, I'd say, find people better than you and play with them. Definitely. Yep. You know, challenge yourself. I think yourself. that's true. Yeah, that was that was my thing, too. Yeah, you got to keep up. You got to keep up. Get with people that are better than you and try and keep up. That's all there is to it. Yeah. But it's tough when you're me to find people better than you. (laughs) Yeah, it gets harder too, let me tell you. (laughs) The heady veterans, you know, they got to go, where do you go? Yeah. I got to go to Japan to find those weird two-handed Japanese guitar players. Right, right. Show me something. (laughs) It's funny. All right. Oh, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Hell Yeah. Are you a music listening freak like I am? Nope. I hardly ever listen to music. Really? Yep. Yep. Really? Really. Oh. Really and truly. I used to, I'd latch onto something cool and new, you know, and, yep. and go through my period of, uh, you know, I was into Wilco for a while and I was sure. like a radio head. I'm like, this is different. My kids would turn me on to stuff. Sure. But I never sit down and listen to anything except my own stuff. Wow. Because I have, it's interesting. I have music in my head twenty four seven. Right. I, yeah, I would not be surprised. I'm if that's trying. How I, I have such a volume. I have literally thousands of pieces of music that I just don't have enough time to pull it all together. So that's my focus. Gotcha. All right. Never mind. <laughs> but I will. I will listen to things for inspiration. Like you know, I'll watch a YouTube video and say, "Hey, that's cool." You know. Sure. And then I'll just try to check stuff out. Like I will whenever my my kids t- turn me on to something. Like yeah, that's cool, and I'll find it inspiring or something. Mm. And that's, you know, that's how we grow also is by listening because you'll say, hey, I like that. I like what they're doing. I like that chord progression. I like that sound. Sure. I'm going to take that and put it into my vocabulary and, and try to make something. Of Far it. out. Do you have a favorite album from way back when? Uh, not really. Not really? Okay, yeah. never mind. I mean, it'd have to be uh, I probably something from my youth, like Four Way Street, Crosby, Still Dash, Young, that live album I played okay. over and over. There's a Neil Young decade album I played over and over. Sure. Uh, Jesus Christ Superstar played over and over. There's some Beatles stuff, I'm sure. But other than that... What's your favorite Beatles album? Just curious. Oh, I don't... Uh, you don't know? I mean, the White Album, but then sure. Sergeant... No, Sergeant Peppers. It's okay. got to be Sergeant Peppers, because I listened to that recently. I was like, oh, yeah, that's still got it. Yeah. yeah. Did you hear the remix? I think it was the remix I listened to. It's pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. I got to admit. Me I, being a purist, but still. I got turned on to the Love Album from Cirque du Soleil, mm-hmm. where the tracks were awesome yep. man the, sure. the what's his face the producer's son was yep. responsible yep. for transferring yep. him giles yeah yeah and man it was mm-hmm. so clean i never heard the drum sound so good even right. though they were mangled arrangements sure. and stuff i was like into it and it's so funny my kid uh brendan who's yep. who's really sure. into music he, he's a musicologist you should probably have him on to talk about you know what someday. maybe hello he should yeah but anyways but he was into that love album and he was also into beatles but he didn't realize they were like remixes of stuff. Yeah. You know, so he went to, the, they had a backwards version of something where it's just like, yeah. Yeah. and we were at a, the library and they were like, it was a little talent show and kids could yeah. come up and then perform a talent and win a little cookie or something. Sure. And he goes, okay, I'd like to perform If Negu from the Love album. He starts going, <laughs> I'm like, oh no, dude. Oh, man. 
And it was so great because he great. didn't realize it wasn't an actual song. I said, like, dude, you couldn't do like Love Me Do. Yeah, and he, he, yeah, he liked that. <laughs> he's just he's just edgy. That's all. That's awesome. Saying. Yeah. <laughs> no, he he is funny. He, he was a fun. He used to come here for lessons when he was younger. Mm-hmm. And he ruined everything because he was so smart. <laughs> I couldn't be funny because he just... He was right there with it. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, he just had it. Oh. He's, he has such a depth of music. He's gotten into these obscure 70s uh, progressive rock bands. I've never... Oh, heard really? Of. Oh, he he just he's just consumes them and he just catalogs it. And he's like, okay, you know what? In 73, you had this record. You know, what, what was the, I can't even think of any of them, but they're just so obscure. I've never yeah. Well, yeah, we, we'll have to have them up here. There you go. Okay. Sorry. Tangent. No, that's fine. No, the whole, this whole thing's a tangent. That's the whole point. <laughs> All right. I figured out a way. This is another question I need Excellent. answers to. Yeah. And I figured out, I finally figured out the way to phrase this question. Mm. You ever be eating something mm. and you say, you know what? I could have this every day. What would it be for oh. you? When did that moment Gosh. ever happen? I've been really into cooking lately. Okay. And trying different things and you know, looking at recipes and stuff. I just I just I don't know why I'm consumed with learning recipes. Uh, why not? Um, though it's a creative thing. Yeah, know? why not? And I and I've recently been getting into spicy food, which I never like spicy food because oh, I'm Irish, I think potatoes are spicy, you know. Oh. <laughs> but um but whatever, my palate's changed as I've got sure. older. But if I had to pick a food, seafood, when I was growing up, we would eat massive amounts of steamers and lobster. Okay. And that's something I could eat every day. Butter, gotcha. Butter, any kind of seafood. It's just a delivery mechanism for butter. That, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. That's, you know what? That's an answer. That is an answer. Because you people go, well, do you mean, that throws me into a tailspin. Because I used to say, if you could only eat one type of food for the rest of your life, what would it be? The thing is, well, you mean type or specific? And then I'm like, oh, well, but now I think I got it. Yeah, that's cool. Hey, man, I'm just being honest with yeah, you. Seafood, yeah, seafood. Far out. Um, I don't know. I think that's it. Great questions, John. You're good at this. Kind of, I guess. I'm giving you encouragement. Wow. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Dave Kosminski in the peanut gallery. There. Yeah, Dave Kosminski, the boss man is Shout here. out to Dave. We got to get him a Woo! mic. <laughs> yeah, there's we next time. Next time you're getting mic'd up. Oh, Dave, you know what? There you go. There you go. Nice. <laughs> nice. Farted, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry, I did that right on the mic. Too. That's, I don't know, whatever. All right. Decongest that thing or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, you know what? Michael Cleary, that's you. John Pagman, that's Is that me, it? I mean, we you. could we could do so what I tell people yes. because you know, I'm figuring this out as I go. Oh. If if at any point there are things that you wanted to say that you did not say, there's no law saying we can't do this again. Right so on. I'm, and I can you know what I mean? with the best of them. So listen and yes. think and then if you go, "Hey, I'm ready to go again. I got some ideas." I you think know? we should go more into other people's music cuz I know you love talking about that and analyzing okay. stuff and I love right. analyzing mixes right. and you productions and stuff like well, that. Next time, now that everybody now that we did the getting to know you. Yeah, there you go. Next time we'll just start getting into it. Sweet. So we'll think about it. Yeah. Love All right, it. cool. All right, sounds good. Cool. Is that a plan? It's a plan. All right. I'm into it. Michael Cleary, ladies and gentlemen, Portland's own. Yay. Michael Cleary. That's him. Thank you, John. Yeah, you got it. Thank you. This has been the John Peckman Podcast. Beautiful downtown Portland, Connecticut. Connecticut school. Connecticut. I'm having real problems with that lately. Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance just over the bridge. Beautiful downtown Portland, Connecticut. See ya. Take care. Be safe. I gotta pee.